for giving the instructions and sorry dear sisters for the inconvenience caused due to some technical problem so without wasting our time we begin the presentation of today praise the lord sisters happy to lord. welcome happy to welcome all of you dear sisters for this virtual presentation on the life of our founder we begin with this video wherein you will view our provincial house let's watch the video thank you sisters once again praise the lord and warm welcome to our reverend mother sister savina sister sushma the provincial superior and all of you dear sisters to the third series of talk given by sister gaina our provincial saint clair province and also by sister kathleen over to sister gaina polina ko dekh please praise the lord my dear sisters praise the lord praise the lord i'm happy to be with you though virtually <laughs> first of all we thank almighty god for inspiring our superior general and council to guide us in preparing ourselves for the 150th birth anniversary of our founder we thank mother savila and sister sushma for sharing with us 
their reflections on our founder. Mm -hmm. Our today's reflections are based on the charism given to us by our founder as mentioned in Article 3 of our constitutions. We have two parts. The first part, we will reflect on our intimate union with Jesus. And the second part will be taken over by Sister Kathleen. Sister will explain how our intimate union with God helps us in our intense participation in the redeeming mission of Christ. Finally, we conclude with a song on the life of our founder, composed by our junior sister, Sister Supriya, and sung by our young sisters and our candidates. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Birthdays are usually associated with gifts. As we celebrate the 150th birth anniversary of our beloved founder, Right Reverend Fortunatus Henry Como, what gift shall we expect from him? And what gift he expects from us, his beloved daughters, nothing more, nothing less, but that the charism he has given us becomes a reality in our lives. Intimate union with Jesus in our prayer, community life, and apostolic activities. Now, my dear sisters, we may say, this intimate union is not possible for me. Yes, I know it is difficult, but not impossible. We need to do little homework, that is to keep our minds and hearts constantly clean and practice humility, charity, and detachment. Detachment not only from persons, places, and things, but detachment from self. Doing everything for God's glory, nothing for self-glory. Union with God helps us to listen to the Holy Spirit and to do God's will, which our father founder always wanted to do in his life. We pause here for a moment. We speak to our founder and ask him to help us to keep our minds and hearts clean and be united with God. <clears throat> Second point, the ardent desire of Bishop Pomo was that the cross shine on the barren mountains so that the barren mountains become fertile. Recently at the meeting of Pope Francis and our Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Pope gifted our Prime Minister a plaque with the words from Isaiah 51.3. The desert will become a garden. <clears throat> Though things seem to be uncertain and disturbing in our country, society, and communities, Father Founder gives us hope when he says, 
my dear child you want god's kingdom to spread in your land it will come from your close union with jesus if you wish to work for christ live with him in communion with him the presence of jesus in religious life is meant to be unbroken continual and forever they shall set before everything else the spirit of prayer to a habitual consciousness of god's presence about them and in them we pause for a while and we ask for the founder to bless our country our congregation and our communities third point our founder says busy activities even in god's cause may starve the soul hence through constant union with christ keep always the passage clear we live in a consumeristic society constantly bombarded with slogans like buy one get one free so let us make a choice for god and practice spirituality of enough 13 general chapter decree one on poverty we shall observe what our father founder says in article 147 of our old constitution to desire nothing to ask for nothing to expect nothing beyond what is strictly necessary such will be their favorite rule we pause for a while for the founder may our union with jesus teach us the spirituality of enough the fourth point <clears throat> Jesus was in perfect communion with God John 15:10 Recent pandemic with all its tragedies has brought us closer to God's presence It has made us humble charitable and dependent on God alone In our union may we become like jesus when you are jesus's own strive hard to resemble him says father founder he who claims to live in him must live as he lived 1 john 26 abide in me as i abide in you john 15:4 Our daily consciousness examen will help us to see whether gradually our attitude our mindset our thinking pattern is becoming like Jesus becoming another Christ is the greatest birthday gift we can offer to our beloved founder we pause for a while when i am another christ i will be a blessing to my community to my society and to the world and thus i will intensely participate in the redeeming mission of christ over to sister kathleen
The earnest desire of our founder was that through our union with Jesus, we the mission sisters take an intense participation in the redeeming mission of Christ. This is our charism and thus make the cross of Christ shine in the hearts Maybe. of all people. Are we alive and true to it? The emblem adopted by our founder and the one he gave to our institute was the cross. And thus the motto was, in hoc signo vincis, in this sign you will conquer. Like Mary, our mother, the fire of the Holy Spirit, like the apostles, we ventured into the unknown with the cross as our shield, with the word of God as our weapon, and with the Holy Eucharist as our strength to proclaim the redeeming love of Jesus in our land. Our founder was a zealous, far-sighted missionary and had a great desire to help the poor and needy, particularly women and girl children who were deprived of their rights. Our own lives, he said, must reflect the love and poverty of our father, St. Francis. Our founder was a true shepherd who went after the lost sheep. He had great love and compassion for the suffering, the orphans, the neglected, the marginalized and the most abandoned. Around us in our cities and towns, there are the lost and the abandoned. We ought not worry too much about self-protection, but stand in pastoral solidarity with our suffering people today, the marginalized, the migrants, the refugees, the displaced people. Today, more than ever, the symbol of the Good Shepherd is so relevant. For our founder, the lost and the least were his primary concern. When people all over the world now experience economic crisis, because of loss of jobs, suffering and death of millions, our founder would want us to develop a new worldview of universal solidarity based on values of peace, fraternity, justice, equality, and human dignity. Our 13th general chapter invites us to be prophetic leaders, empowered by the Holy Spirit to be joyful witnesses of God's mercy. The pandemic beckons us to be good Samaritans. Pope Francis, in his latest encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, on fraternity and social friendship tells us that we need to acknowledge that we are constantly tempted to ignore others, especially the weak. We have become accustomed to looking the other way, passing by, ignoring situations until it affects us directly. Fratelli Tutti 64, the whole world is wounded and lying on the roadside. 
Jesus concluded the parable by saying, go and do likewise. Luke 10, 37. The parable gives a universal dimension to our call to love, one that transcends all prejudices, all historical and cultural barriers, all petty interests. Fratelli Tutti 83. Remembering our founder today and his sister, Reverend Mother Mary Matilda, their wisdom and hard work have gone a long way to guide and steer our institute, the Mission Sisters, and through us to kindle the light of love and gospel values in our institutions, hospitals, and social centers. Their aim, which is ours today, is to communicate God's personal love through healing, teaching, and creative ministries. Today, our well-equipped hospitals and efficiently run schools uphold the values of Christ. We should continue to strive and become emblems of God's unconditional love by rendering services to the marginalized, underprivileged, and the forsaken. As we listen to the cry of the poor, and our ailing planet. May the spirit of our founder boost us as we hold hands and walk the path less trodden, seeking to lift up the not so fortunate in our areas, workplace and surroundings. God never works anything but wonders. These are the words of Right Reverend Fortunatus Henry Como, OFM Cap, the founder of the Mission Sisters of Ajmer. God indeed has worked wonders in and through this very chosen soul. The Lord awakens us in this eventful 150th birth anniversary of our founder to revive our spirits, to revive our faith, to experience a conversion of heart and bring renewal in our institute. We have an anchor. By his cross, we have been saved. We have a rudder. By his cross, we have been redeemed. We have a hope. By his cross, we have been healed and embraced so that nothing and no one can separate us from his redeeming love. To conclude our reflection for today, we invite our junior sisters and candidates to honor our father founder with a song. Oh, 
Once again, sorry sisters for the delay and we apologize for the inconvenience that we caused. Thank you, Sister Gaina and Sister Kathleen for your inspiring talk, for sharing with us your insights on our founders, prayer life and mission. Special thanks to Reverend Mother who organized this virtual meet on the 150th birth anniversary of our founder. This is also an occasion for all of us to review our life. Am I living up to the charism of our founder? And how am I passing on the heritage of our founder to the people and especially to our younger generation? Founder has truly come alive in our midst. We continue to reflect on his saying and look forward to the celebration on 10th December. We also would like to thank and express sincere thanks to Sister Pearl, who willingly agreed to create and share the link with us for this session. Thanks to you, dear sister. Now I hand over the session to Reverend Mother, who wants to share her view with us. Thank you, Sister Gena. Can you hear me? Can you hear? Yes, yes. yes Sister. Yeah. You can sit down, Sister. Yes, Sister. Thank you, Sister Gena. Sister... Praise the Lord, Mother. Praise the Lord, Mother. Sister Gena, Sister Kathleen, and Sister Janet, and the entire community of Provincial House. We have taken 